Now, we already know that Biden's team is incompetent on many fronts. So in military affairs, their embarrassing performance in Afghanistan, in foreign policy, their humiliation with Kerry and Blinken across the table from their counterparts at the CCP, and at the border, they're importing a trifecta of disasters, from COVID to crime to poverty. But as nightmarish as all of that has been, Biden's on track to eclipse all of it with his pathetic handling of the economy. When you take a step back and look at what's happening, we're actually making real progress. Maybe it doesn't seem fast enough. I'd like to see it faster, and we're going to make it faster. Well, he'll still be making this claim in 2024. It's coming faster any day now. Because for the left, things are always going to improve in the future, but they actually never do. It's the ultimate bait and switch. Maybe we should call it bankrupt and switch. Now, this could have been a slam dunk, the economy, even for Biden's goofballs. After all, we had the strongest economy of any G7 country in 2018, 2019, and 2020. That was all under Trump, obviously. And despite the challenge of COVID last year, our real median household income was more than $67,000, which was 6% higher than it was in 2016 under Obama. And thanks to President Trump's leadership, Biden's team not only inherited new vaccines, but an enormous supply of them at a time when many other countries didn't have any. So all Biden had to do was, number one, make the vaccines widely available, number two, lift all restrictions on economic activity, and number three, let the Trump era policies and the hard work of the American people take us back to the booming economy we enjoyed before COVID. Of course, they did the exact opposite. They canceled Trump's policies, overreached with vaccine mandates, and scared the public into staying at home. And over the last few days, we've seen the toll that Biden's radical agenda is taking on the economy. It all started with Friday's abysmal jobs report. 194. Whoa. I see 194,000. That is real low. People don't seem to be in a hurry to get back to work. There's one and a half jobs for every unemployed person out there. America is running out of everything. Christmas at risk. A supply chain disaster only gets worse. Your holiday turkey may be harder to come by this season. The turkey's going to take your turkey. Well, who else wants to send Biden to the island of misfit presidents this Christmas? Thank goodness Santa's sleigh, by the way, doesn't need gas because the price per gallon is up 43 percent under Biden uh, than it was in December 2020. Wow. But don't worry, because I'm sure our energy secretary is working hard right now to turn it all around. We don't own our own gas supply or oil supply. Uh, and so the market is what the market is. Presidents don't control the cost of gasoline. And we also are aware that we want to move into a clean energy environment and that we want, um, while this transition occurs, he does not want to raise costs on everyday people for anything. Well, she's either stupid herself or she thinks we are. Not only do we have a strategic petroleum reserve that was set up for this exact type of situation, the feds control billions of barrels worth of oil and natural gas on public lands. So first Biden banned new oil and gas leases on public lands. Then, after he was rebuked by the courts, he slowed to a trickle the issuance of new permits. Now, this slams working people by worsening inflation, which the angle warned you about earlier this year, as did prominent Democrats like Larry Summers. But Biden's so-called experts, they're always in quotes, by the way, when I say experts regarding Biden, they just kept downplaying it. I see important transitory influences at work, and I don't anticipate that it will be permanent. Most of the price increases we've seen are, were expected and are expected to be temporary. Well, last week, the definition of the word temporary changed. Supply bottlenecks have developed mm -hmm. um, that have caused inflation. I believe that they're transitory, but that doesn't mean they'll go away over the next several months. Depends on what the meaning of the word temporary means. The scenes of huge traffic jams at our major ports where ships are idling for weeks and even months, 
is another devastating indictment of the Biden administration. We brought this up a few weeks ago. New York, L.A., and now Savannah, Georgia are in total gridlock. Our rail lines are gummed up as well. One yard in Chicago reportedly had a line of trains waiting to be unloaded that stretch for 25 miles. But at least we have a former Rhodes Scholar as Transportation Secretary to fix it for us. What we're looking at is basically everything between uh, those ships and your shelves that gets uh, the goods to where they need to be. And we're partnering with the Department of Labor uh, to try to establish more apprenticeships and, and make sure that we're addressing that. What? Did he actually say apprenticeships? We're going to get us out of this situation. Heaven help us, because this entire administration is an apprenticeship. Meanwhile, Biden's labor secretary has absolutely no clue as to how to fix the labor shortages. I don't have an answer for you. I mean, I'd like to, if, if I had that answer, I'd be giving it all day today. But I think that one thing that I'm going to do is, I mean, if I were the mayor of Boston, I would have an understanding why that's not happening. So I think we dig down a little bit more here. We went from Labor Secretary Gene Scalia to that guy? Oh, my goodness. When you see it all together, the totality of the incompetence really is quite staggering. So it looks like we are in for a long and difficult winter, a winter of shortages and disappointments, especially for Americans living in cities strangled still by restrictions, mandates, and you throw the cold weather into that? My goodness. It's all playing out exactly as the angle predicted. Instead of just reopening the economy without restrictions, the Biden team did everything it could to terrify Americans and convince them to stay home. The folks in College Station, Texas, though, on Saturday night, they were obviously not listening to Tony Fauci at all. Not a lot of masks there. The foolish and unnecessary vaccine mandates did nothing to save lives, but they are pushing people out of the workforce. Pilots, healthcare workers, teachers, firefighters, and police. It's criminal what is being done to these good people. The administration has resisted efforts to return welfare payments to normal or allow landlords to collect their rents. They've restricted the oil and gas industry, as I mentioned. Now they want to waste trillions more on new government programs that will do more to harm our economic competitiveness. Fantastic, guys. Common sense is out the window in this administration. We know that. And they believe that Americans are mostly racist who are destroying the planet anyway. So why should people as awful as that have a higher standard of living than any? Certainly, they shouldn't have any higher standard of living than, let's say, people living in Greece. Of course, if we had a real press, they'd be all over this. Instead, we have pretender pundits who can't quit their Trump addiction. Trump wants an army back. He wants this army to help him have vengeance on the entire American democratic system. Trump is marshalling those forces to try and seize power in 2024, whether you, the voters, elect him or not. Trump's reason for being in politics is Trump. George Clooney called Donald Trump a knucklehead in an interview with the BBC. That was just today. <laughs> it went on for hours and hours and hours. Well, what else are they going to talk about? There's no defending Biden's policies or his performance. The poor man can barely locate the exit in any given room where he's speaking. And sure, I know you're all thinking, Laura, this is depressing. We're in for a rough ride. Yes, we are for a while. But let us never give in to despair. No way. I said this the day after the election. Keep a stiff upper lip. We know how to turn things around, and in time we will. We survived Jimmy Carter. We can survive this. The Carter years led to Ronald Reagan. And if the American people are smart, and I think they are, the Biden years will lead to the new and better economic policies after 2024. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.